Now that you've signed up with Kinsta, it's time to go ahead and create your first staging site or create an additional site if you've already created one before. Now that your plan is entered and you have the allotted slots that you need, you should see a button at the top that says either add site or add your first site now, depending on if you set up sites previously. So we're gonna go ahead and click on add your first site now and then we're going to pick our site's location. So this is the server location. Now this doesn't make as much of a difference as it used to, especially when we're using a great host like Kinsta. But generally we want to pick the location that is closest to the largest portion of our target market. So for example, LatePress.com is an international site. Our market is pretty much anywhere that, that speaks English and hopefully later on any language. Uh, and so we don't have a specific location that we need, but I'm gonna pick the East Coast because the, the US is probably the place where we'll get the largest amount of users and it's also kind of closer to me. So I'm gonna pick the East Coast of the US, but you can pick wherever your target market is going to be, or if your target is international, then pick the location that's close to you. But I'm gonna pick the East Coast and then I'm gonna name the site. And this, this has to be all lowercase letters and it's just letters, no crazy symbols or anything like that. This is just the internal name that you'll see within Kinsta. And then it's gonna ask us whether or not we wanna install WordPress or not, and we do, so we wanna click add a brand new WordPress install. Then it's gonna ask you for the site title, and that's the actual name of the site that's gonna be in the front end. Now we can change this later and I'll show you how to do it, but just put in the general name of your website. And then it's gonna ask you for an admin username. Now I'm gonna go into admin accounts and editor accounts and, and which one we should be posting blogs with later on. But the point is, uh, is that the username that you're gonna log in with, or this admin username, should be something that people are not gonna be able to easily guess. And it's also, it's never gonna be displayed on the front end. So don't you know call it like you know my business admin or something like that. Um, we wanna make it kind of complicated, whether it be a string of letters and numbers or something like that. It's just gonna be something that you're gonna be able to remember or store in a password thing, um, but it's not gonna be easy to guess and it's not gonna be displayed on the front end. So you don't have to worry about having it do, you know, having it to do with your brand or something like that. So I would say for the admin username, some kind of string of letters and numbers or, or some kind of combination would make it complex, as just as complex as your password, for example, um, because we're the only ones that are gonna be using it and we wanna make sure it's not something easy to guess. So go ahead and enter in a site title, add in an admin user, a password, again, we wanna make it something complex. And if you're having a hard time you know, remembering these kind of things or you're worried about not remembering them, uh, you can use a service like I use lastpass.com. That's L-A-S-T-P-A-S-S.com. Uh, but there's a lot of password you know, memorizers, whether you use the one that's default with your computer or you use a service, um, it's worth it to keep your usernames and passwords different for every login that you use and every website and keep them as kind of complex as possible so they're not easy to guess. So go ahead, add in the admin username, the admin password, add in your email address, select the base language for your WordPress website. And then for these options down below, we might be using WooCommerce and Yoast SEO, but we're gonna leave those unchecked for now because I will help you when it comes time to install those plugins and set them up. And you do not need it to be a multi-site installation. We'll cover that separately. So just fill in this information, leave these three boxes, boxes unchecked, and then click on the Add button. Once you fill out the form and click on the Add button, it's gonna create the site. As you can see, it's doing on my screen now. And that's it, you're pretty much, your website is set up. So let's let that finish, and then I'll show you some of the bits of information about the site. So once your site is created, you're gonna see it here under your site's listing. And I just wanna kinda of show you around the Kinsta dashboard a little bit, and then I'll show you how to actually access your site. Uh, so here's the site's listed. It gives us some basic information, and you can get to the, you can manage the site by either clicking here on the title or clicking on this manage button. And this first page under info, it's gonna give us some information about our site, you know, our IP address, the location, our FTP or SFTP connection, which is how we access our files directly. And it's gonna show you some, some other information here. Now, obviously I have to block this out, uh, but you'll see it on your own screen. You'll also notice this toggle up in the top right for change environment. Now, right now, it's showing us the live environment because we haven't created our staging site yet, but we're actually not gonna do that right now. 
and we're going to build our entire site and then right before we launch we're going to create our staging site based on the completed site and then we're going to have two duplicate copies of our site one to work on and one that's going to be live but for the moment within kinsta we're going to work on the live environment until we're ready to bring our website live in which case then we copy it to the staging and i'll show you how to do all that so this is the basic info on the domain section this is where we would add in our domain when we're ready to go live and i'll walk you through that process later on this is an important tab for backups now please keep in mind that uh, Kinsta is going to automatically take a backup of your website every single day and it will take a backup of, of both your live and your staging when you have one uh, but if you did want to create a manual backup you go to this backups tab and then uh, click on backup now and it'll create a backup of your site so if you're right about to do something and you're worried about something happening on your site you can create a manual backup but it will do that every day automatically and then we'll go into the tool section so the first thing here clear site cache if you remember during the hosting tutorial I talked about how Kinsta is going to cache our websites automatically and if we did if for some reason one of our changes wasn't showing up because it was stored in the cache it should flush itself automatically but if for some reason it doesn't we can click on this clear cache button there's also some other options here but some of them we're not going to use and the other ones like enabling HTTPS we are going to do that but we're going to do that during live so right now this clear site cache is really the only thing you need to pay attention to uh, the redirects is for redirect rules which we're not going to be covering for right now plugins is going to show you a list of plugins that are active on your site uh, so right now obviously we just have the basic plugin because we haven't actually touched our website yet and then there's CDN and logs, which we will cover later. So that's basically the, a quick rundown of the Kinsta dashboard and the different sections within your site. So now you're ready to move on to the next tutorial where I'll start walking you through kind of the WordPress admin and we'll start messing around and setting our site up. Now, in order to do that, you're going to need to access your, your current staging URL or the current URL we're going to use to build. And in order to get there, click on domains and right here, there's going to be a gray box and that's going to give you the URL of your staging site. So if you click on this open URL button, it's going to pop up that site and you're going to see a basic WordPress install. And that's where you can get started in order to, you know, to move on to the next tutorial. This is where you're going to get started. So open up this tab and then even open up the WordPress admin by clicking on that button and log in with the admin username and password you just created and then move on to that next tutorial which is gonna start walking you through the WordPress admin dashboard.